Well, here we go. Time for us to return to the beginning of the semester. Let's take a look at the foundations of geometry. Let's go back to our discussion of neutral geometry, and let's ask the following question. What if side angle side was not the sixth postulate? That is to say, what if we took the existence postulate and the incidence postulate and the ruler postulate, we said those are all still in, and the plane separation postulate and the protractor postulate and all of their consequences. Neutral geometry holds. There were all sorts of things that we could prove in geometry before we hit side angle side. And then side angle side opened up some doors for us. But what if we don't postulate that? What if we take a transformational approach? What if we decide to postulate reflections? And once you postulate reflections, you get all the others. You get rotations, you get translations. Once you postulate reflections, you've got all the isometries because every isometry is a composition of one or two or three reflections. Well, zero or one or two or three reflections. So this is the only one that needs to be postulated. So let's pretend that this was our sixth postulate instead. For every line L, there exists a transformation rho of L from the plane to the plane. It's called the reflection in L such that the following are satisfied. If P lies on the line of reflection, P is a fixed point. It does not move. If P lies in one of the half planes determined by L, then its image is in the opposite half plane. And reflections preserve collinearity and distance. A reflection is an isometry. What if that holds true? Uh, then reflection is what we're going to call a rigid motion. Uh, a rigid motion preserves collinearity and distance and, in fact, angle measure. It is a rigid motion. Uh, so what we're going to prove is that side angle side would come along for free. So let's imagine that I have two triangles triangle A, B, C, and triangle D, E, F. And this side is congruent to that one, and this side is congruent to that one, and this angle is congruent to that one. Let's pretend that that's what we've got. We've got side, angle, side. I want to prove that the two triangles are congruent. And when we talk about congruence from a transformational standpoint, two figures are congruent if there is a rigid motion, a sequence of isometries that maps the one onto the other. So here's the way we play this game. Uh, in fact, this is going to be a little bit intuitive, I think. We're going to map this side onto that one. We're going to say, OK, let's pretend that we have an isometry that maps this red segment BC onto this red segment EF. We're just going to take this whole triangle and shift it over. Uh, maybe it's a rotation, maybe it's a reflection, maybe it's a composition of those, uh, maybe it's multiple reflections, whatever. But we're going to bring this triangle over to here so that E is B prime and F is C prime. And we're going to let A be on the opposite half plane of EF from D. So A is going to be somewhere over here. All I have to do is show that A prime can map to D by some kind of isometry. 
because B has already found an image on triangle DEF, C has already found an image on triangle DEF. So if A can find an image on triangle DEF through an isometry or a sequence of isometries, then I know that the one triangle is congruent to the other. Uh, keeping the markings the same, a, a prime, B prime has to be as long as A, B. That's a property of isometries. And rigid motions preserve angle measure. So angle A prime, B prime, C prime is congruent to angle A, B, C. So here's what I've got. And I want to show that A prime can map to D. And the way we show that is to recognize that segment B prime, C prime, or segment EF is an angle bisector of angle A prime ED. That is the key piece of information. Because what do we know? We know that if you take an isosceles triangle and you reflect it over its angle bisector, then he becomes she, the image of a B lies on AC and vice versa. Uh, it's called the side switching theorem for those of us who engage in transformational geometry. So uh, wait a second, you're saying, where is there an isosceles triangle? Triangle A prime, B prime, D is isosceles. And it's isosceles because we said that this side has to match up with this side, which is congruent to this side. So now I have an isosceles triangle here, two congruent sides, and this is an angle bisector of the angle between the two congruent sides. So A prime must be the image of D and vice versa over a after a reflection in line EF. So, triangle ABC can be mapped onto triangle DEF by an isometry or a sequence of isometries, and therefore the two figures are congruent by side angle side. How do you like them apples? Now, once you have side angle side, in neutral geometry, the way we studied it, you have all of the others. We proved all of the others from side angle side. But we could do it, we could do a transformational proof of side side side. We could say, I've got triangle A, B, C, congruence and triangle DEF. I want to show that they're congruent. Uh, AB congruent to DE, AC congruent to DF, BC congruent to EF. I want to show that that's true. I want to show that there is a rigid motion or a sequence of rigid motions that map triangle ABC onto triangle DEF. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to map this segment to that one. Because those two segments are congruent, there is an isometry that maps BC onto EF. Uh, let's pretend for argument's sake that A prime, because we know where B prime is and we know where C prime is, let's pretend that A prime is in the opposite half plane of EF from D. A prime is in the opposite half plane. Get the hash markings right here. All I need to show is that A prime is the image of D after some reflection, and then we're good. So here's the curious thing. The curious thing is that 
quadrilateral A prime, E, D, C prime. This quadrilateral right here is a kite. It's got two congruent sides and two other congruent sides, and the congruent sides are consecutive rather than opposite. It's a kite. And when I draw the long diagonal, the main diagonal of the kite, uh, the one that connects the vertices that are in between the congruent sides. When I draw that diagonal, it's an angle bisector here and an angle bisector here. And what do we know about isosceles triangles and angle bisectors? Side switching theorem says that A prime is the image of D and vice versa after a reflection in an angle bisector of an isosceles triangle. So B has an image, goes to E. C has an image, goes to, goes to F. A also has an image after a sequence of isometries. And so even with side, 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 from a transformational standpoint, we end up with congruence that way. So I encourage you to take a look at uh, transformational proofs because they're pretty nifty, actually. They're, they're pretty nifty. Let's see, what else? Oh, what are we doing? So let's do it this way. Venema does one more. Venema gives a proof that in the Euclidean plane, the sum of the angles of triangle ABC has to be 180 degrees. Now, we proved this in neutral geometry, and it, our proof is fine. Our proof is absolutely fine. There, there's nothing that's wrong with it. But there is another way to skin the cat if you want to look at things from a transformational standpoint. Let's take this triangle and let us translate it along that vector. So everybody moves. A moves to B. C moves to some place over here. Now, we know that a translation is an isometry. Isometries preserve distance, which is neat, but isometries also preserve angle measure, which is the neat thing here. What isometries also preserve is parallelism. Well, not true. Not true. We, well, isometries do preserve parallelism, but that's not the key to this particular situation. Here's what we know. We're in the Euclidean plane, and since we're in the Euclidean plane, this angle plus this angle plus this angle add up to 180 degrees. Those angles add up to 180 degrees, which is nifty. Oh, let's go back. This I know, this I know. If I can prove... Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, so here's the deal. I know that isometries preserve angles, so this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this. But do they add up to 180? Yes. Why? Well, because these are corresponding angles for these lines with this transversal. And since these are congruent angles, those lines are parallel. 
Now in the Euclidean world, when parallel lines get cut by a transversal, the alternate interior angles are congruent. Now I've got three angles that add up to 180 degrees. And since those three angles add up to 180 degrees, then these three angles add up to 180 degrees, and I have the Euclidean theorem that the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So we use the transformation and the Euclidean parallel postulate to end up with the result that we're looking for. So it is an interesting thing to approach geometry in those terms, because we're not used to thinking in terms of transformations, we're used to thinking in terms of triangle congruence. But if you can think in terms of transformations, sometimes you can come up with a slick proof to something you didn't think you knew how to do. So there, when you come to class, things that you're going to be thinking about, we allege that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. But is there a transformational way to look at lines A, B, and C, D that intersect at E? Is there a way to look at this from a transformational standpoint that, that says, of course, angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, instead of just saying, oh, they're both supplements of the same angle, and therefore they're congruent? That's one of the things I'll ask you to consider when we gather in class together. Um, I will also ask you to consider how we know the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other in Euclidean geometry. How can we take a look at a parallelogram in Euclidean geometry and see the diagonals AC and BD intersecting at O? How could we take a look at that and say, oh, clearly, O is the midpoint on both sides. Well, that's something to think about. Okay, so we'll do that when we gather next time. There you have it.